Yes, what's going on? Welcome to the video. So, before the lockdown, I posted this photo of a squirrel. So many of you showed love, thank you. Also, a large number of you asked me how on earth did you get this photo? Let me show you how. Let's begin with locations, and to be honest with you, any of the main parks in central London, you will have a good chance. If you go further out, like here in Richmond Park, it's still possible, but it's just a bit more difficult because there's not as many people here, so the squirrels are just not used to having that many people, therefore they're not as comfortable. If you just wanted the best possible chance of doing this, I would say go to Holland Park. Specifically, there's a place in Holland Park called Kyoto Gardens, and if you go to Kyoto Gardens, just behind Kyoto Gardens is a little area with three or four benches. It's just a normal walkway, nothing special about it. However, that seems to be the place to go in order for them to come to you. Now let's talk about equipment and what you need to take this photo. Obviously you can do it with a phone if you use your hand and sort of try and film them. But to be honest with you, it doesn't get the same effect. So if you can use a proper camera, now, in terms of which camera to use, it doesn't really matter, as long as it can do a few things. The first thing it needs to do is to be able to take pictures quietly, also known as an electronic or a silent shutter. As soon as a squirrel hears the shutter mechanism, it will run away. So if you can shoot quietly, even better. Now, the other thing your camera needs to have is a burst mode. So you can take a bunch of pictures really quickly uh, without sort of pausing and stuff in between because that will give you the best chance of catching the correct moment. Now, in terms of which lens to bring, I would say 24 mm full frame equivalent will give you the best chance. If you go any wider than that, then you risk of scaring the squirrel away because you're gonna be trying to get your camera even closer. If you go narrower than that, then chances are you will probably not be able to get the whole scene in one picture. Now let's talk about how to set your camera up. So the first thing you wanna do, as I've said earlier, is enable silent shutter shooting. In terms of shutter speed, keep it at one over 500. That's fast enough to freeze any motion within reason. Any slower than that, you risk blurring out your photos unnecessarily. Now in terms of aperture, this depends on your own taste and how good your camera is at focusing. So. For example, I would say F4 is good for most scenarios and these photos that you can see right now were all taken at around F4. If, of course, you want a more creative look, more depth of field, you can use a faster lens. The problem of using this lens is that quite a lot of the image can be out of focus and you really need to nail the focus properly in order for it not to look just blurry. Also, your autofocus system in the camera has to be half decent to not hunt and miss focus. And finally, as for ISO, set it to whatever you need it to be in order to get a correct exposure. Now let's talk about focusing. I would say for most scenarios, if you've got a half decent camera, autofocus will be absolutely fine. Of course, if you have a lens which is very fast, so like an f1.2, for example, or a camera which is not good at focusing, that's where manual focus can give you even more control. To set manual focus, honestly, that's a bit of trial and error. What I would say to start with is have it focus about 10 centimeters away from the, um, from the lens. Just put like your phone or something in that location and focus. And then as the squirrel comes in and out, you take your burst of photos and you hope that when the squirrel was like 10 centimeters away, you got the picture. Now you see why it can be a bit of a faff, However, as you fine tune it, you can get some incredible photos this way as well. Now let's talk about food and I'm gonna do my best to suppress any nut jokes, but I can't promise. First thing you wanna get is some monkey nuts. Monkey nuts are great because squirrels love them and also it takes them a while to get into it, which means you can get some cool pictures of them sitting and trying to get into this. Another advantage of the monkey nuts is if you want to feed them using your own hands to avoid getting bitten or scratched, they're quite big, which means you can just, you know, hand them out without a problem. And the other thing is walnuts. So walnuts, from what I understand, are like sweets to squirrels. They love them, they go crazy for them. Obviously they're a lot more expensive than the monkey nuts, but if you bring both, it will just give them some variety, which means it will keep coming back for more. The first thing you wanna do is make sure the squirrels are aware that you've arrived. And the way to do it is when you get to the area, get a few nuts and spread your nuts all over the place. This is usually the most time consuming part of the process, so do have some patience. Now, when you have three or four squirrels around the area, you know you're onto a winner and we can progress to step two. Now let's talk about how to get this shot. Well, this particular photo, the way I done it, is I took the nut and put it inside the lens hood. I then found a squirrel that was sitting, on, let's say, on a tree or on a bench, 
and then I reached slowly, slowly, reached the camera out to the squirrel. As the squirrel started to sort of lean forwards, I knew it was interested, and then I started the burst mode as soon as it went for it. Now, because you're keeping the camera quite far away, the squirrel has to like leap out and rest its paws or hands or whatever they are on top of the lens hood. And then that creates the illusion of the squirrel reaching out for the camera. Now, one tip here is as the squirrel backs away, you can stop taking photos at this point, but don't walk away because in some cases, the squirrels don't run away if you don't move because then they almost forget that you're there and they will sit in front of the camera and like in this case as you can see like an inch or so away from the camera and just eat and then that gives you an opportunity for some incredible photos which not many people can get because at that point the squirrel is already comfortable with your presence and all you have to do is keep quiet and not move. Obviously, this is not the only way of doing it. It's just the way that I've done it to get this particular shot. The other ways is to leave the camera on the floor, leave some nuts in front of the camera, and then you can get photos of the squirrel running up to the camera. The other one is if the squirrels are extra friendly, you can take the nut, hold it up, and you'll literally get them climbing up your leg, and you can just take photos looking straight down. Um, and they're the main ones that I can think of. Obviously, if you've done this before and you have your own, tricks of getting these cool shots then write them down below but apart from that that's really all there is to it so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it was useful now that lockdown is lifted you can go out and do this for yourself and yeah thank you so much for watching have a good day have a good week and see you soon